We are learning now for the Ihu in the Shoma of Ovimoyer Menachem Ben Akiva and Sobas Moishe. Silabas Ben Tzion Rusbas Sholoim Ule Rufuas Rivka Bas Yudis Rufuas Yudibas Rivka Osho Ben Ozna Besorch Shochol Israel. That's Lachas Oilam Torah, nobody will stop the Bnei Torah from learning Chas Vasholam. We are in the Hilchas Agnirla Omarove. Let's summarize quickly what we did yesterday. We're learning about Sroyros. What does Sroyros mean? Literally, pebbles. Sroyros means when an animal, it's either a rooster or a, um, a cow or whatever, and they walk on something, and then something, oof, that thing breaks, right? And then or it doesn't break. It's either something breaks or they step on a, let's say, a pebble and they send it flying, boom, to someone's Roshul Yochid. And in Roshul Yochid, that person's property was damaged. His window was smashed. Then we say, that how much do they pay? Half, very good, not half, but half. So whatever you want, either half or half, the two halves together. The midsummer in the middle of the Atlantic. So, Lemaisa, this is, we said, Aloha Mushemistina, or Hilchesa. This is Aloha, really should have been as a Ksholem, because it's, it seems like it's not enough of a Gromi, or maybe we don't believe in Gromi when it comes to animals. It should have been a full damage, but the Torah reduced it to half for no apparent reason. I mean, we can see it's a little bit less direct, so maybe less money. We can make a svara, but Lamaisa, this is like a hilchasa, something that we'll know as a tradition. Did everyone agree to the aloha of tzoros being 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 half? No, who argued? Sumchus, so, so. very good. Sumchus says the whole thing. Sumchus says the entire thing. That's what Sumchus says. Very good. Now we're going to elaborate more and explain more about tzoros. And if you notice, I was a bit uh, hesitant to say that source is indirect, and soon you'll see why. Yeah, source is not the most indirect, it's, I would say, semi-direct, as we're going to see. Says the Gemara, Omar Rove. Omar Rove. Baruch Hashem, Ezra Sashem, Nasev, and Etzliach. Kol Shebezav, Tome, Benezikin, Meshalem, Nezek, Sholem. Kol Shebezav, Toer, Benezikin, Meshalem, Chatsi, Nezek. What's going on over here? Says the Gemore. Rabbi says, Rabbi compares the directness or indirectness of the Pe'ula to Zav. What does Zav have to do with the price of cheese? If a person is Tome and the Tume is Tumas Zav, yeah, the person has that emission from his body, not sperm. It's a different thing called Ziva. He has something uh, uh, more runny. It's a disease. And that Ziva makes him have a Tuma. And anything that he steps on that's meant to be stepped on or anything that he sits on or sleeps, lies down on, becomes Tome. But Zav, if Zav touches something or carries something, but the carrying I want to leave alone now, Torah says we're talking about touching. If Zav touched something, but to touch the screen, it becomes Tome. Okay? What about if the Zav actually is not touching anything, but the Zav threw a stone at something, threw an object on someone. The Zav is Tome, he took an object and he threw it at me. Am I Tome? No. So basically, Rodek compares Zav to the level of Nezikin of Tsoyros. And I'm reading the Gemara again now, restart. Tome. The kind of touch which is metame by zav, which makes the other thing tome, if the zav touch something, so too, if the animal actually treaded and stepped on the ball and on something and broke it, the behemoth yet stamped on my, I don't know, vaz, nezek sholem, kosh bezav toil, benezikim shalem chatsi nezek. Anything that Zav is tor by, which means that the Zav threw an object, says Rashi, Kigon Shezorak, Chetzetz al Odom, Avi Tor. Yeah? And Benezikin, it's Tor, Schatzinezek. If by Zav it would be Tor, Benezikin, Schatzinezek. Do you have any new piece of information over here? No? The Gemara Taina is that this is a very nice, interesting comparison, but what's the, what's the news here? We knew that these are the standards of Tzoros, and we also know it by Zav. 
Yeah, so now the Gemara is asking on Rove, the Rove, Tzoros, also the Ashmorina, is Rove coming to tell me about the Loch of Tzoros, which is already well known in the Mishnah, <coughs> and Rove is an Amora, we've been discussing Tzoros long enough. Rove is telling me about Tzoros. Answer the Gemara, Loi. Rove, Eglo, Moisheches, Bakaroin, Kamash Malan. Rove comes to tell us something new, which we didn't know before. He wants to uh, uh, fine tune exactly what Tzoros are. The Rav says, Egla Mosheches Bakaron, which means, let's have an Egla, Egla Yefeithia. What's an Egla? It's a calf, a female calf. Yeah, the baby cow, baby female cow. And it's Mosheches Bakaron. It pulls along with it a carriage, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, call on some kind of a wagon. Thank you. A wagon. And now, as the Egla walks, the wagon walks, so, uh, travels behind it. Yeah. So then, that's the Chiddush of Rova. What's the Chiddush of Rova? The Chiddush is as follows. What would you say if an animal walks and it's and an agla, and the egla and agla, the egla and the what's its name? The egla and the the egla and the wagon are one right after the other. It's towing behind, and now the the wheels of the wagon. Now, crush something. Is that soyos? Because the animal itself didn't step on it. It's kilo derivative. It's something that's behind. It's not the animal itself. So maybe you would say that soyos. It's not the animal. It's the, the towing thingy behind the... So maybe it's not considered as... What would you say? Is it soyos or not soyos? Yeah, no? Why? why what? I'm asking you a question. You have to tell me why. Directly to it. Okay. No, that's not a good example. So you see, you're arguing on both. Yeah, yeah. Not direct. Okay. Interesting. No, it's direct. It's indirect, but it's not direct. And the winner is Baruch. Burich, Burich is right, and you're wrong, and soon we'll see why. Okay. Says the Gemara exactly that Tzachidish. I love those discussions that just developed now. On one hand, they can say it's not direct, because we saw in the Mishnah that if a Talmigol has what? Adlil has images of the Tarnagol, has some kind of, yeah, this is a Tarnagol, who, who, now it has a thread connected to it, or oh, the tea bag. Yeah, it has a tea bag connected to it, and over here you have something vicious like Adli, and as it dances around, now this is also dancing around, and if this hits something, let's say this is hard and bad, and it hits something, we say that's Chatzin Ezek Troilos, it's considered as Hefne Ezek, as indirect as Troilos, and here we say, comes over and says, just like by Zav, if the Zav is opposed to the rooster with a thingy that dances and it has a thread and a, a, a let's a small bucket at the end, something hard at the end, as opposed to that, here by the Agola, by the wagon, we say it's not source, it's direct Nezek. What's the comparison? Soon we'll see why. And what's the comparison to Zav? The comparison to Zav is because just like if the Zav would have been on the Agola, let's say the Zav himself would be in the Agola. If the Zav would be in the actual carriage, then everything underneath would be Tome. There's a loch about Zav, that if a Zav is Metame, the Zav sits on, let's say, 10 different mattresses, all 10 mattresses are Tome. Like the princess and the pea, if you know the story. You know, all the way in the bottom, still Mashpia. Okay, so then we have the Zav, 10 Matsoi, same, same thing over here. The Ashpa is direct enough. And therefore, in this case, it's not considered source, it's considered as direct Nezek, and it has to pay full Nezek. Frek the Rishonim, like Rabbi Tzvi over here. Why? Why do we say that by the turning gold, the dances, and you have a chut, you have some kind of thread, before I have my tea, you have a thread connected to the legs of the turning gold, and this thing is jumping around, and we say, boom, if that hard thing over here, Pech, it hits something, we say that it's Chatzin Ezek, ah, what's the difference between this and the Agolo that travels along is considered Nezek Sholem? I think that's what you were saying, the thing is like this, there's no airspace there either. There are two answers, answer number one, which I don't, I didn't see this time, but I remember it's from Yeshiva days, some things I remember from 30 years ago, and that, that is literally 30 years ago, the answer is quite simple when you think of it. When the animal, when the Tarnagol dances, yeah, it hops, or the real word is dances, dances around and frolics and hops around. So the, the dlin doesn't follow his movement down to the T, right? It's not exactly following. He's dancing here and he's dancing there. 
It's not a direct, direct movement, נכון? ממילא, it's כאילו the Dli has a life of its own. Yeah, it causes movement, but the movement is like semi-free. So when the, when the animal walks nice and slow in the street, uh, and it carries along with the agola, every step of the animal means every step of the agola. Maybe half a millimeter less or half a second later, I'm not a scientist. But you get what I'm saying. Every, once the animal stops, that second, the wagon trailing behind also stops. When it starts, it starts. So it's, it's an extension of the behemoth, says Rabbi Fredman 30 years ago. It's like an extension of the behemoth, it's like a third leg. I mean, it's not called Sroy Royce. It's only an illusion. It's a third leg. The tonical is two feet, last time I checked. Yeah, thank you. Okay, or oh, I stand corrected. You're right. The Egla and the Agala. The Egla has four legs. Yeah, it could be a monkey. The Agala has four legs, and the fifth leg, Kehilu, the fifth wheel, is the Agolo. And therefore, here we say that this is Nezek Shole, because it's Mamish Mamish directly from it, even though physically, geographically, is not under it. The other answer is, and that I was happy to see, some people say, Anachinami, the Targol with the Dlil should have been Nezek Sholem. So you know why they only pay Chatsi Nezek? My mistake from yesterday seems to be not such a mistake. Remember what I told you yesterday? That for the for the Targol to dance around and have a Dlil is crazy. It's not a normal thing to have. I used to do it, I think, in the South. They used to have all these like, you know, like chicken fighting, so they had that too. So then, that's crazy. It's not the normal thing for Tarnigol. Apparently, one of the Rishonim says that. I think Talmud Arashbo. He says just that, Enochinami should have been Ezek Sholem. Because he wants to say that the Tarnigol Udedlil is like the animal with the wagon behind. So why do you pay Chatzin Ezek on the Tarnigol? Because it's crazy. And if it's crazy, it's called Keren. Crazy and Keren both start with a Kuf. Right? And that's all you remember. The center, that's the other answer. Crazy Keren. Now let's continue because everybody, nobody has questions. I decided. Now Tanika will say the We have decided that no questions. Tanika will say the Rovet. A bride said to support Rovet's opinion, and it's a good chazal for us. Behema muedes leshaber b'derech ilucha. A behema is muad. Muad means what? Normal. That's the normal way, and you, it's expected to break as it walks along. Ketzad, how is that done? Behem shenich nesal lechotzer anizak. Behem entered the courtyard, the chotzer of the damaged guy. Only there you have on, 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 regel. Vezika begufa, it damaged with its own body. As it walks along, it brushes and brushes against something and crushes it. Derchilucha ubesayro, derchilucha with the hair, the mane, the ukaf shalera with its saddle, ubeshlif shalera with the burden on it, ubepumish ubefia with the bit or the muzzle in the mouth. As it walks along, that piece made out of metal. Yeah, that sometimes it's big and sturdy, and it brushed against something. The bell in its neck. The chamor be masoi, a donkey. Donkeys usually they carry bigger and heavier things as toy swiss, and therefore the masa of the chamor, the burden of the chamor is a bit loose, is a bit, you know, extending, is protruding. Maybe it's not part of the chamor. Yes, it is part of the chamor regarding the zikin and yuchai ben regel. The egel of Hashem is bakaron. Oh, here came Rava's moment. Now we know we're reading the Raisa. Egel Moshech is Bakaron, Pam Pam, Mishalem Nezek Sholem. Just like Rav said, an Egel pulling behind it the Karon. And like I think Baruch meant to say, yeah, every movement of the Agolo is every movement of the Egel. You get the game? It's not a pun, it's just the words. Egel and Agala. Egel is the calf, the little cow, and Agala is the Karon. Both are really Kielu the same body. It's an attachment, yeah. Mimela, you pay an Ezek Sholem, it's not considered as Sororos. Now we come to a very long dish Wow, wow, wow. Up until now, up until now, we discussed one case, really. With all, all the, we discussed different cases, but all variations on the same theme. The variations on the theme were the birds flapping, and the tarnigol with the glee, and the animal walking, and with the carriage, and with my grandmother's carriage. Now we come and we say, up until now, all different variations were talking about a case where the pebble, let's say it's stepping, it steps on a pebble or in something like that, then it sends it flying, and then that pebble damages something else. It damaged the window of the barber, it damaged the, I don't know, the dog's beauty salon, it damaged something, it damaged the dog himself, it damaged something. 
Now comes a different question. What would be if the animal stepped on an object, sent it flying, and the object itself broke? It's a bit more direct. Get me? Yeah, in other words, it was walking down the street, the behema, the big cow walking down the street. In India, nobody would tell it not to go anywhere. And it's st stepping on a, a Chinese toy. The Chinese toy survived the step, but it sent it flying. And then the beautiful Chinese expensive Chinese toy made out of China and made in China, that itself broke. What really is the question? Now we're going to see. Interesting you have what to say, because we're still not even beginning to say anything. I'm just saying that's the case. The longest behind it and the Chakira is coming soon. Quick. No, Right. Well, that's that's flushing. Oh, flying and something and breaks. That's that, that, that's awesome. Now all of a sudden he has flies and all the when it is something else breaks. Yeah, exactly. Nice. That's a good 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 uh Very good, very good, very nice. Let's see the following case from a Brysa. And that following case will not be explained. I warn you, because the Gemara will explain it later. It's very weird Gemara here. The Gemara brought a Brysa, sort of ignored it, then a question, and then the Brysa comes back. Tan Rabbanon, our rabbi is taught. Tan listen to this case, because this case is going to be your friend for today, till 10, 20, and beyond. You're thinking and learning all day long, I'm sure. Tan Rabbanon, Tan Nigoilim Shoem Chatzitin Bechevel Gli. Those Tanagolim found a very interesting game. A bunch of Tanagolim, a whole bunch of roosters, they found a new game. They're mechated, they're pecking and picking into a chevel gli, into a rope. At the end of the rope is a gli. There is a bucket, okay? So they kept picking and picking and with their beaks, yeah, mechated, mechated. And eventually, you know what happened? Surprise, surprise, <coughs> the nifsak hachevel. Eventually, the last fiber that connects the rope to itself, that broke, which means now the hevel is torn. It tore completely. And guess what? That sent the gli, the bucket, flying, the nishba hadli. Now the gli went flying either whoa, all the way down the well, boom, well, 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 it broke or maybe stand down the hill somewhere dry, at the end of the day, they're picking over here and they tore the rope. Now, because the rope is torn, the dli at the other end of it now was sent flying and the dli itself broke. As I promised you, that's a new case. The dli didn't break something else. The dli itself broke. What do we say? They pay full nezek. You can ask why. And that'll be a very nice question. We're not even in North Korea. The Gemara will discuss why, what, where, how, and millions of, not millions, there'll be three different stages to this uh, story. But just remember now, remember the case, put it, please, in your mind. Yeah, save it in a disc. Yeah. What do we say? Those roosters are picking and tearing the hevel, the rope over here, and then after the torn, the, the tearing is over, boom, 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 they're picking and picking, then boom, the head is torn, the dli, which is valuable, send, is sent flying somewhere else, and doesn't break other things like classical trorus. I would call it trorus type B, hepatitis B, trorus type B, which means what? It's not that the object is breaking something else, the object itself is broken, is being... Yeah. The Atut Snodim. It's Atut Snodim. Soon, I'd love to hear what you say in literally two sentences from now. Because now Rava will start analyzing something and then I'll be very deep to your opinion, really. Boy Rava. No, no, really, really. We're out. Good. No, no, I asked with a delayed reaction. It's a. Boy Rava. Doso al Kli. Now Rava has a question related to this. Doso al Kli. A behemoth stepped on a Kli. The first uh, uh, reaction, so to speak, the result was, no, the clue wasn't broken. What happened to it? But as the result of the animal stepping on the, let's say, a little ball, yeah, let's say, and there it broke in the Mokamachev, it's walking down Lachish, or maybe private domain to make it safer. It walks down, uh, I don't know, someone's garden, Chamyanko's garden, walks around, 
ant steps on something, sends it flying or misgalgal rolling because of the animal. Venishbal, in the other corner, in the other part of the field, that's where it finds its end and breaks. Mahu, what would be the halacha? Rav is now suggesting two ways of looking at it, and I think now you'll be a happier person. Do we say, Bosar mi koro azlina the gufe? Rav is now analyzing and breaking down the question. What's the question? Mi koro azilna, azilna follow. Do we follow the beginning, the act, the cause of the, of the actual deed? The gufe he, the beam stepped on the ball, and that ball broke. The beam stepped on the vase, and the vase rolled and broke because of its stepping. So it started with Maise Begufoi. It did hit the actual vase that very soon after broke. So Bein Ezek Sholem. It is, you touched it yourself, Mr. Animal. Or Dilma, or maybe, Bosa Tvav Mana Azlina. Maybe we follow the sad end, not the cause, but the effect. What's Tvar Mono? Tav is a Kshin. Tavar Shavar, what's Lishbor Bivrit? Right, you know that. Break, maybe you follow the broken Kli. That's Oros Nino, that's Oros. Why? Because you can say, don't go by the cause, go by the, by, by the effect. The Maise didn't break under its feet, it broke somewhere else. Beautiful question. In other words, how direct is direct? When we let the animal go off the hook, so to speak, have nezek because of indirect business, here it's not so simple. Bishlama by regular Troyroys, we say what? We say that it stepped on the ball over here. The ball went somewhere else flying and broke the window, which the animal never touched. That's that's regular Troyroys. If you listen carefully, you get it. Masha Enken over here, it touched the actual ball. The ball that broke later is the same ball that it stepped at the beginning. It's like delayed reaction, but the but the but the thingy, the, it's not even delayed reaction, it's like indirect action. But the actual thing that broke is what the animal stepped on. So if you put two and two together, hey, your animal stepped on my ball and it broke because of it. So if you go by the beginning, but the animal's action, there was a direct relationship here between the behema and the broken object. Hey, you have to say pain as a kshalim. That's one way. The other way is no, it's loyalist. Because at the end of the day, it wasn't direct result. We keep saying all day long, direct, 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 yeah? No, it wasn't direct. It stepped over here. It was sent flying five meters away, yeah, boom. And there it broke because, boom, it hit the concrete uh, uh, floor. So, Mimela, maybe that's called soil. So that's a Chakira. That's a Chakira. Is it from Chaim? Reb Chaim is in the Gemara. Reb Chaim Brisker is like saying this instead of Ove. That's a question of Ove, yes. Are you, you identify with one of the study? I understand. Yeah, but is it easier for now to formulate what you wanted to say or no? In what? Robin, Rob himself is not a Robinik. Rob himself, he has to study. So good. Ah, Rob has to study. Very good. Excellent. Whenever people tell you, me too, me too, me too, me too, me too. When you learn a lot of Gomorrah, you get to think of, you know, always see the other side too, the double, double, uh, double edged sword. So now, very good. Zok the Gomorrah, Tif Shot, Lay Midrab, says the Gomorrah, what does Rob have a question? Tif Shot, you can answer his question from Rabba. Who was earlier, Rabba or Rob? Rabba was a teacher of Rob. Very good. Rabbi taught Rove in Abaye. So the Gemara says, hey, Rove, what I have a question. Your own rabbi has an answer. Listen to this. Doma Rabbi. Rabbi speaks about a similar case, very cool case. That probably should be the title today in the internet. Zomak Kli Merosh A person, yeah, threw someone's Kli from the Rosh Agag. He lives on the 10th floor of a nice apartment building somewhere, wherever, in the Chemish, near the shopping center. Yeah. And he lives there, and he decides to, he's had enough with his uh, flatmate's uh, vase, which he doesn't like, not to his taste. He takes the vase, and he throws it from the top of the roof. And now it's on its way down. Ooh, yeah, it's flying down. The story's not over. Before the vase hit the ground, and he's about to die, the vase, yeah, to break, Boachel came another guy who lives in the first floor, and he is a professional baseball player, which I'm not, to be honest, yeah, he's a professional, Babe Ruth, who you see of it, yeah. He took a baseball bat and, boom, just for the fun of it, 
<laughs> as he was flying by his window, he ran, took the bat, and boom, broke. The one on the first floor broke the vase before it hit the floor. The question now is, who's higher? Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. so now, yeah. So now, who is Chayev, the guy in the top floor that sent it flying, or Babe, who actually broke it, the Lamaisa, with his baseball bat, but he broke something that would have broken anyways, unless a miracle would happen. It would own all the miracles of Chatzila. So the answer is, da -da -da -da, they go to the base Din. No, the baseball guy's Potter, because he has to play the next season. That's now. Potter, the baseball guy's Potter, Mr. First Floor Baseball Mumcha, is Potter from Vos Frechtrantzvi, the Amrin and Lay, because we tell Mr. Uh, bottom guy, we Potter him, is off the hook, and we say, Manatviratovar. He broke a cleave that's already broken. Uh, he already broke something that would have been broken anyways. He, he broke something that would have been broken anyways. In other words, when the 10th floor guy, he uh, already threw it, Wait, before you answer and you ask question, let me define it. We actually see, and I think I'm remembering things now from 30 years ago, because 30 years ago I worked hard, hard on it as opposed to now. The top guy, it's everything is already encapsulated there. When I see a, a seed of an apple, and I know that a good professional agricultural chakloi would put it in the ground, I know, as long as if all goes normal, that here I have the potential uh, apple tree. When the guy threw it from the top floor, it's killed, everything is already there. It's only a question of time. It's not even delayed reaction or indirect reaction. Last time I checked, gravity works. Yeah, look, my phone. Yeah, in other words, since gravity plus his action, it's all really there. Which means, basically what we're saying here is that we follow the first action and not the last one. We follow the cause and not the effect. You think you are you stick to your guns like before, and you say it's the effect. Lav Dafka says Rabba. No, you follow the first action. If the first action encapsulates within it the everything you need in order, it's like a package deal. You have everything you need for the cleat to break. There's nice movement, tenth floor, nice gravity today. <laughs> There's nice gravity today. Yeah, the guy. So email everything is there to break. I the last action happened with Mr. Uh, baseball guy at the bottom. Because the etzim, broke something which we halachically view as broken because we see everything happening right from the start. Why does Rob have a question about the animal who steps on the item and then he goes and he flies and it falls somewhere else? Of course it should be Nezek Sholem because we follow the first action, the first cause, and not the last effect, effect with an E, yeah? And therefore, that's a zach. That's what Gemara wants to say. Yes. Um, let me just answer, continue, and then I hear your questions. Talk to Gemara, Lerabba, Pshitale. Lerabba, me by Le. Oh, the Gemara. It's very nice that Rav was a Talmud of Rabba. So what? I mean, Mechabed the Rav. But what was simple for Rabba, Lerabba is a question. It's that simple. In other words, Rav sees that as a question. Well, what my Rebbe seems to be, Poshut. He still has questions, yeah, like in this year. Yeah. In other words, Rob still has questions after his Rebbe statement, and he says, I'm not sure my Rebbe is right. And therefore, I still ask the question, when we have a an action that's not even so delayed, it's like a boom, boom action, here, boom, and right away, we'll stand somewhere else. The Nezik geographically happens somewhere else a few seconds or minutes later. Do we say everything is like already encapsulated at the beginning of Nezik Sholem? But we say no. The, the final result is what we care about, and that took place in a different time and different place than the actual boom of the leg. And therefore, we should say chatzin as it The more people are lamdoni, the more people are into learning. I'm just telling you this before we continue. I can see the more people go into Torah and the more the mind becomes refined, two things happen. First of all, become better people, usually. Secondly, there are less into Deutsche Stussim and like the American law says and the British law says, made up by some two crazies. So we don't care so much, we don't care at all about Goyesha laws. And thirdly, when you go more into learning, you you appreciate questions before running into answers. When I learned more with Chilonim, like the Jassim Machlokas or Mim Rabuda in the very, very primal stage of the Mishnah, and the right away side with one of them. <laughs> but it's like, right? Because they not, don't realize how much fine-tuning there is still to do. The more you're into the learning, you realize there's a Chakir, there's Tad one, like you said both, but yourself. Side one, side two, let's weigh the toots dodding before we come to a conclusion.
with all that, I'm happy to hear your questions now. Yes, uh, no, again. Now, says Gmar Toshma, the penultimate line, Yud Zayin Ud Beis, yesterday's Omud. <laughs> Toshma, come in here. Hidus Eino Muad. Hidus is the rooster dancing around, hopping around on an object and breaking it. Eino Muad. It's not Muad. What, why, why is it not Muad? I would say not normal, maybe. And some say yeah, it's normal in Muad. Zog Gmar, no, 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 you are wrong, Akiva Taichtal. Hidu Salka Daitach, you want to tell me the dancing by itself stamps straight on the actual, remember, on the, on the dough, <laughs> or straight on my Gucci tie, dancing around is not normal. Stamp for the for the targol to hop around is normal. The question was about a dlil, but stamp for the animal itself to walk or to, to dance, to hop around is very normal for the targol, for the rooster, yeah? El Alav, so what sad do you have to say that it's Hatsinezek? Why should it be Chatzinezek? Why stand there for the Tarnagol to walk, to walk, you know, like that in his funny gait and break things? Of course it's regular. Why do you say that it's Chatzinezek and it's crazy? It's not crazy. Answer the Gemara, El Olav must be Hidus Vehitis. <laughs> must be we're talking here, like in the Mishnah, Hidus, which means he was dancing on something. It, it is, it sent it flying somewhere else, and it broke over there. The Hakamiflagi must be the two um, Tanoim in the Brisa. That's exactly their argument. The mass of Abosomikovas Linan. This is classical case of Tsoiloi's type B. The actual item itself broke somewhere else. And therefore, one opinion that says you pay Nezek Sholem follows Mikolo. What's Mikolo? The beginning, the first cause, the boom, the first boom of the Tarnagol stepping on it. Nezek Sholem. The one who says only Chetzi believes that's classical. Troyos. And Troyos, last time I checked, you pay half. By the way, Sumchus so far is ignored, yeah? In other words, it's so us, you don't go by the cause, you go by the EE effect at the end, and therefore you pay Chatzinezek because it happened over there in the corner, not over here, and it's called source, which means basically we want to tell Rava, we want to tell Rava, your big question is really Mechlokes Tanoim, it's a Mechlokes Tanoim, Zog Digmara, loy, 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 not necessarily so. Behit is Tzoyros, could be really, we're not talking about source type B, we're talking about source type A, Classical tsoilois, which means it hit something, a, a shrapnel or piece of, not a shrapnel, a shrapnel or, or a pebble, sent it flying, and that piece broke something else. That's classical tsoilois, right? The thing that flew broke something else, not broke itself. And that's classical, regular tsoilois, which we learned all the time in the Mishnah. So why is there an argument whether it's het nezek or nezek shalem? Welcome to Sumchut's world. Ubeplugta, the Sumchut's verabon and kamiflegi. Those two tanoim in the Brisa are just siding with Sumchus. Sorry, they're siding with Sumchus and Tanakama. Tanakama says how much? Half. Sumchus says full, regular, classical source case. So again, we don't yet, we did not yet find an answer to Robert's question. Yeah, except for Rabba, but Robert himself is still in doubt, and Robert is looking for a Tana to give him indication about this case of Tzoros type B. Yeah, the actual item broke somewhere else, but because of a direct action of the animal. Do you say Nezek Sholem because the first stepping was direct, or do you say no? You follow the end of the story and you only pay half. That's still a question. Now we go back. Now please open the little window in your computer screen. What was the case with the chicken? I'm testing you now. Yeah. What was the case of the chicken? They packed into the, yeah, they were picking in the, into the, heaven, the rope, it tore, and then the bucket broke. Oh, Toshma, that could be, and how much did they pay? Nezek Shulem, Nezek Shulem, they pay. Oh, that could be a good answer for Rova, right? That seems to be very much the same case. Toshma, come and listen, come and hear the story. Yud Chesam Adalaf in the second line of the page. Baruch Hashem, Tarnagolim Shom Mechatetin Bechevel Dli. The Tarnagolim were Mechatet. Lechatet is they, they're picking in it. And Bechevel of the Dli, in the rope of the Dli. But if Saka Hevel, the Hevel broke, tore, the Dli broke, they paid full Nezek. I would say, hey, excuse me, isn't that Soros type 2? Soros, right? They're 
they're bothering it over here, they're picking it over here, and then he was sent flying over there, and it broke over there. That's Mamish like our case of love it, of source type B. The item itself broke in a different place after it was directly sent over. And you see how much they pay. It's full Nezek. Mr. Tarnagol, or his owner maybe, they have to pay Nezek Shalem. Shlami, no. We can hear from here. Bosom Ikor Azlinan. We follow the Ikor. We follow the beginning of the action and not the end result. Very nice. So why does Rav have questions here? He has a very nice brisa to help him get the answers. Tirgama says the Gemara, no. He can be metag in this brisa. Now we want to explain the brisa differently. A hevel. Maybe really the hevel itself is what you have to pay for. <laughs> Excuse me. Says Toysles, we're not going to do this very nice Toysles because we don't have time. Maybe later. Lamaisa, here we're talking about the animals picking and picking. And we're talking about hevel that's nice and expensive. And the hevel itself is also worth money. The hevel is worth money. Don't tell me it's only a hevel, you rich guy. And therefore, maybe when we say you pay Nezek Sholem, it doesn't relate to the dli. That dli that was ooh, sent flying down, Yechai maybe chetzi. But the hevel itself is, of course, a direct Nezek, the mamish cuts the rope. That's mamish maise beyadayim, maise be mako in the beak. So, of course, Yechai Nezek Sholem. Frag the Gemara, we mainly we don't answer Rob's question. So Rob's question cannot be answered from here. Very good. The Gemara will ask this. Tun. Frag the Gemara about Hevel Meshunehu. Says the Gemara, what, why you have Nezek Sholem for cutting a rope? Is a rope tasty? No. Last time I tried, you eat a rope, I never tried. Yeah, it's not nice to eat. And therefore, Hevel, it's crazy to eat a Hevel. Why are they eating it? It's Karen. They're stam, angry. <laughs> they're biting into the Hevel. That's Karen in my language. They're stam cutting something viciously or out of border, but they're just destroying something for no enjoyment. And therefore, that should be Chetzi Nezek. Why say Nezek Sholem? You try to basically veer the attention from the lead to the Hevel, and we'll get your question too. The Hevel itself is Nezek Sholem, should be Chetzi Nezek. That's Karen behavior. Stam, tearing, and Baltashchis. They're not enjoying it. He should be Chatzin Ezek. Says the Gemara, the most Belisha. We're making the Kimta. The Hevel is Maus here. doesn't exactly mean disgusting. It's covered with dough. That Hevel has like leftover dough. Maybe the lady, no, when she, it's not such science fiction. I think our wives work in modern kitchens. Back then, the same lady that would need the dough would afterwards have to also draw the water from the well. So her hands would be dirty with, with, uh, with that's most Belisha means that's like dirty with leftover dough. So that a tarn and golem actually eat it. They eat the actual thing. And so that's Shen. Shen, they're enjoying it. They're eating something nice. They're eating the Lisha, which is the, the dough leftovers from the Hevel. And that's why it's Nezuk Shalem. So really, we're not talking about the Dli. The Dli is Rav's question. We conveniently ignore Rav's question. And really, the Rav, the, the Bryce, only spoke about the Hevel. You have Nezek Sholem because if they're eating something nice, and eventually it breaks, it still falls under Shen. What? Frick. So you're justifying the Tarnagolim's the pecking habits at the Rav. Not justifying. I explain. They enjoy it and therefore it's Shen and Chav Nezek Sholem. They have more. Not justifying. No. It's not their right to break my Chavel. No. In other words, they're eating the Chavel for their enjoyment. So the Chav Nezek Sholem. Shen. It's opposed to Ken Chetz I'm not justifying. On the contrary, I'm the attorney of the Chavel owner. Now, Frek the Gemara Boruch's question. I like your question. You get a like. How can you ignore the second part of the Brysa? The Brysa says that the Dli broke. According to you, it's irrelevant. You're running away. You're skirting around the issue. You, I'm asking you, Rov, my name is Rov, and I'm asking you what would be with something that broke in a different place, right? That's what happened to the Dli. And you're telling me, no, no, no. The issue is only the Hevel. It's not the only issue Hevel. It says Nish Badli. According to you, it's irrelevant. It says Nish Badli, and yet we say this Chav Nezek Shalem. Ella says the Gemara, now we're trying again to avoid answering Rava. If you get the story here, we continuously try to avoid Rava's question because we don't want to, to we don't want to, and unless we know otherwise, we still want to remain with the question until we have a clear answer. 
We want to make sure that the answer will be crystal clear, so we make the answer go through Shiva Medor Gehenim. Ella, we answer now, Sumchusi, always convenient to run away to Sumchus. He's a good daddy. Sumchus is a koifel in Tzoyos. <laughs> he doesn't believe in Tzoyos at all, not ever. And therefore, Sumchus would say, Nezek Shalom, Sumchusi, Dama, Tzoyos, Nezek Shalom, Nishalem, haha. And Achinami, Rav asked the question of Yilah Alocho. Aloch is the Chachamim. That Brisa was a Brisa from the school of thought of Smedosh of Sumchus. And therefore, there, you pay Nezek Shalom always, beginning, end, and my grandma. You always pay Nezek Shalom regardless. Sumchus is out of the story. Is it Different coalition, different story. Frag the Gemara, and then I'll hear you. Is Sumchus? Aha, you want to say Sumchus? You want to run away to Sumchus' arms? Is Sumchus? Now we're going to run into trouble from the safe of the Brisa. That Brisa has a hidden part which we didn't read before. The Brisa now continues. It says in the safe, the second part of the Brisa, Nitaz Mimenu Shever. Continue the next story. I would have made a picture over here, yeah. Nitas Menesheva, what happened? The, the animals, what happened to them? They pecked the rope. That's number one. The rope tore and sent the glee flying, and the glee broke. Now that glee broke something else. Yeah, Chad Gadia, Chad Gadia. Yeah, that, that glee actually broke, and one broken piece broke a different item. Nitas mimenu shever. One one broken piece fell off it. Venofal kli acher v'shovo and broke a second kli. At the end of the day, we have three damaged items: the rope, the first kli, and the second kli. So alari shon mishalem nezik sholem. On the first glee that broke, you pay nezek sholem. I want to say the sumchos. Okay. Vala achun mishalem chatzin nezek. Ooh, interesting. On the second one, you only pay half. Troyrois, the Troyrois, you only pay half. Ah, the is Sumchus. Now you want to you want to allege this price. You want to connect the price to Sumchus. So Sumchus would say, yeah, you have to pay for a clean number two also. Very good, very good. The is Sumchus. You want to Sumchus? Mis lechatzin nezek. Sumchus never believes in chatzin nezek. Sumchus says it's full nezek all the way through. Mapitom Sumchus believes in chatzin nezek. However, says the Gemara, thank you for patience. Ah, maybe you want to say yes. Maybe Sumchus is not a complete koicher in Soyrois. Maybe differentiates between koichoi and koyach koichoi. The first effect and the second effect. Maybe the first effect, the first, first cause and effect, Sumchutut and Ezek Sholem. But a second ripple effect, the second stage, second level, maybe that he believes would be only half. Maybe that's the story in Sumchus. No, that cannot be. The Elo had the by Ravashi, Koch Koch and Sumchus, Kikoi Chodami, or Lav Kikoi Chodami. Ravashi has a question later on in the Gemara exactly that. Does Sumchus believe in Koyach Koi Choy or not? You can answer from here that Sumchus says that Koch Kocho is not Kocho, and Ravashi never answered that. Ravashi never derived from here any answer regarding Sumchus. Must be this price is not Sumchus because otherwise there would be a great ace card to answer a question later on about Sumchus, and we don't. Many, many times that's the answer of Gemara. If you don't use it as a raya, it must be that's not the case. I'm stopping here because I want to hear your question, Boruch. But now we came to this, this temporary conclusion. Must be, this is not Sumchus. No, it cannot be Sumchus because Sumchus, our questions from Sumchus are not answered later on. Also, it's not just the Hevel. Don't sell me cheap on the Hevel. We're talking about the Dli. Must be what's the case. That's Rabbanon. And Rabbanon's view, the pecking here, and right away, boom, at the first instant of them picking on the Hevel, the thing was sent flying, the Dli, and the Dli broke. Why is it Nezek Shalem? Sounds like Rova should have only one side. Bosomi Koraz Linan. We follow the first action and not the last effect. We follow the beginning of the story, not the end. Since the beginning of the story, everything was packaged there for Nezek. They tore the Hebel and boom, it was sent flying tach, down the, the well. Let's say it's a dry well. And boom, it broke. That's it. Chav Nezek Shalom. Because it's not Soros. It's too direct to be called Soros. And that's why we understand. Now, what happens if that bucket broke another bucket? Of course, it will be Chetzi. 
Because then everyone agrees, except for Shumchus, that's for sure Tzoros. That Tzoros night one, the classical Tzoros, that the item didn't break itself, it broke something else. When an item was sent flying and broke something else, for sure it's Tzoros paying Chetzi. So, so far, everything seems to be very, very nice. And therefore, we want to say, here, Rob, we have an answer. One more line, one more line, and you'll get a nice report card with good Midos of Lonus. Omar Abivai Barabai, and that's the final conclusion. Abivai Barabai is making now another Ukimta, the Kaozil Minei Minei. He makes a whole different story over here. He explains the story of the bucket and the rope like this Kaozil Minei Minei, which means up until now we thought all the time in different versions the animals were pecking on the Hevel. Oh, surprise, he tore completely, the last fiber tore, and then bang, yeah, the thing went flying and broke, the dli, right? Now say that wasn't the case, it was flat ground. Kaozil minei minei. The animals tore the hevel, and that's a different hill. And now they are pushing the, they have an agenda not against the hevel. Those Tanagolim are smart, they have an agenda against the dli. They want to play with the dli, soccer. They don't play soccer, they're from England. And now what, or football. Now what do they do? They push it slowly and they're inching their way through. They're pushing the bucket and pushing the bucket, mine, mine, mine. And with their own bodies and with their own beaks, they push and push until it breaks the gufoi. It breaks mamish from the body of the Tarnagol itself. It's bechlal not throwers, not even close to throwers. Never went to school with throwers, not even to college, nothing to do with throwers. You're just breaking and then pushing, 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 pushing. And then the Chayv Nezik Shalom, because we say it's not Karen, it's a Chiddush. It's not Karen, Kilo, they have something crazy. It's walking. They're walking Kilo with the item until the item breaks and walking along pushing it and that's still called regel but it has nothing to do with throwers and therefore Rob's question remains a question and is not answered maybe in halacha but not answered over here again he he was waiting for a very long time jeffrey please no everyone before i just remind everyone before we continue it's so far it sounds like no posuk not even logic, because the Gemara said, make up your mind. But human beings, as opposed to animals, which you compared before, either you have Nezik Sholem, or in Grona, you have zero. There's no Chatsi Nezik, but humans are like, half Nezik, half, half Kilo. It's an indirect thing, therefore half. It sounds very nice, logical, and Tim McKenzie would actually love Tzoros, but we're not Tim McKenzie. We say, by our Torah logic, from what we know in Torah, you either have Nezik Sholem or have zero. Except for short time, which is all different story. But Shenkin, but Tzoros, it's Kilu Xeris Akosuv. Maybe the Allah. I'm not saying after the Torah said it, my friend. Like many things, you can put in your logic and say, okay, makes sense to me. Chatzinezek is because it's indirect. But Lamaisi, it's not where it started. It started with the Hilchasa. It's Allah Chal Mashem Sinai, traditional oral law. That's exactly what we said yesterday. Sumchu didn't have that Mesorah. Billion percent. Very nice. So, but at the end of the day, all the other Mesorah. Right Very important. Oh, yo, 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 let's go. Boy Rove, question asked by Rove. Chatsi Nezik Tsoyos. Half Nezik Tsoyos. Migufa Mishalem or Maliyah Mishalem. A new question. How do you pay the Chatsi Nezik Tsoyos? Basin decided your rooster is a bad boy. He walked on the little, I don't know, tiny vase. Boom. And what sent it flying? Not the vase. That's another Shaila. On a pebble, the pebble now flew over there, broke someone's vase. You have to pay Chetzi. How do you pay it? Migufe Mishalem. Do you pay from the body of the rooster himself? If the rooster is worth 200 shekels only and the vase was, the, half the vase was 400, you pay 200. Like who? Like Sholtan. Hmm. Mishalem. Or do you pay Maliyah? Do you pay from good money, from the better land, the best land, from regular money? How do you pay? What's the, what are the really the two different studies? Again, when did we ever find Gufa versus Aliyah? Shotam versus Shomuad. One of the differences between Shotam and Shomuad, Shotam not only only pay half, 
you only pay half providing that your own shore, the, the mazik, the damager, is worth that. But if the damager is worth less, you just don't you don't have to to uh, you know pay for the excess for, for the extra. You just pay whatever you have from the body of the mazik. The question is now about soyois. Which means we're trying to find similarity between Soilois and Chatzin Ezektam, even though they come from different places. But as we said once, they're cousins. <laughs> because the Poles pay Chatzin Ezek. Let's see how the Gemara, again, Rova is questioning, is how does Rova analyze his own question? Maybe he pays only from his own body and not anymore. Deloy Ashkech and Chatzin Ezek, the Mishalem Aliyah. We never found half an Ezek paying from Aliyah. When we look in the Torah, we sort of like Google throughout the Torah and we search and we say, where did we find Chatzinezek paying from good land? Never found that. Because Tam, which is the only other case in the Torah, which pays half, he pays from his own body, not from the good land. I would say the other way. No, of course the soil should pay from the Aliyah, from the good money. The We never find an animal behaving normal, meaning Shen, the the normal way that only pays from his own body. At the end of the day, Tzoros is a cousin of who? He's a child of who? Of Regel and Shen. So of course you should pay what? Should pay Aliyah. He should pay from the good money, like Shen Regel. It's by Shen Regel, that's where it says, yeah, Meitav Sadeh, the best of his land. So it's very interesting. You get what's going on over here? Sroyrois is a child of Shen Varegel, but it has like an affiliation looking at the side at Sholtam. Because at the end of the day, money-wise, it's more similar to Sholtam. It's like you have a child who's your own child, but he's more connected to the uncles or in their cousins, you know, like he's shy to them a little bit, yeah? Like, yeah, Sroyrois is a child of Shen Varegel, should be, uh, of course, you should say, how, how should you pay? Maliyah. And the other say, no, he's only paying half. So you should pay me Gufoy. Because half always goes hand in hand with Gufoy. Toshma, one more second. Hidus Einam Muad, remember the same story of Hidus? Yeah. Hidus, we said, is Einam Muad, Vyeshom and Mareze Muad. Remember the animal dancing and hopping? Some say it's a like Muad and some say it's not Muad. Hidus is normal. It's normal for the animal to hop around. So why do you say it's not Muad? Ella love hidus vehitis. We're talking about soyrois. He jumped, sent something flying, and that's soyrois. Welcome, Itlagi. That's the question. Now that's a machloikes. Man doma einu muad. The one who says he's not a muad because tovim migufa mishalem. Everyone agrees you pay half half. Yeah, you pay half half half. You pay half. When you say muad, it means like muad. You pay what from the aliyah. And those who say tam kiilu, they say migufoi. Madam Amuad, Chasam Amelia, Meshalim. So that's a machlekes. Machlekes tonight is a question of Rava. Says the Gemara law, in Mapitom. They look at the Dushum Chaz Rabban and Kamif Lagi. End of sheer end of story. Really, no, the machlek is between the different tenaim is not, we both agree it's half. And the question is, do you pay Malia or Migufoi? No, the question is, do you pay half? Because Soros is half, as he taught me in Yeshiva. The other one who says muad means what? Sumchus is a sumchusite. He's a sumchus supporter. Every day he goes to sumchus.com. And what? And therefore sumchus believes this is Nedvik Sholem. That's what he says. But Rav's question still remains unanswered. What was your question, Elmer? Do you remember the question or no? You didn't have a question. Yes. And the year is over. And then we hear the questions. Yes. Thank you.